good evening. One of Bush's most memorable speeches in his entire term as president was his Axis of Evil speech. In this speech, he proclaimed three nations composed what he considered to be the Axis of Evil. These three nations, as we know, are Iraq, Iran, and North Korea. This speech has been criticized. Some have said it's wrong to polarize the nation. I believe polarize the world by calling three nations evil. I believe he was correct in his assessment that these three nations are doing many evil deeds. The problem lies not on focusing on this, but, not, but also not focusing on other aspects. One website critiqued Bush's acts of evil by claiming there was really, according to the website, a greater acts of evil which was more domestic instead of foreign. I believe there is another axis of evil. This axis of evil is also, like the websites, domestic. Although, this axis of evil destroys probably every country in existence. These forces of evil are that dangerous. Three forces of evil have tear society apart at the sea. What are these three forces of evil? The first force on the axis of evil is in many ways indirect. Don't assume just because something is indirect, it's less evil. In fact, since it's indirect, it can be awfully tricky, awfully misleading. Thus, beware. You may underestimate a great belief. This evil is often the foundation for other evils. One of my professors in college said, actions emanate from beliefs. Thus, this is the foundation of many false beliefs. So many people focus on so many side causes. But if you focus on this evil, you are getting to the root of so many other evils. The evil of which I speak is mainstream media, which includes... television, commercial radio, and mainstream newspapers. A number of studies have shown how television leads to violence because those who watch tend to imitate it. Large numbers of groups have criticized television for being unwholesome, for putting garbage on the set, exposing our youth to filth. One book in particular, called Bulgarians at the Gate by Steve Allen, describes how television and radio are wretched garbage. Critics have noted how, particularly television, sedates the nation. So many people notice how television 
takes away your very soul, denies your creativity. Others have noted how it leads to a sedentary lifestyle. I have seen myself increase my physical activity plus my creativity in both quantity and quality since I've given up the television set. I recommend that to anyone. A number of others have also noted mainstream media is concentrated in the hands of a few corporations. Thus, viewpoints contrary to what these groups want is suppressed. A prime example is described in the book No Debate. In this book, the author discusses how the Commission on Presidential Debates categorically denies popular and legitimate third-party candidates from entering these televised presidential debates. He says it's a catch-22. These third-party candidates cannot get on the air, therefore they lose votes. Since they don't have enough votes, they can't get on the air. This author claims many studies have shown most Americans want candidates such as Pat Buchanan and Ralph Nader to be in the debates, yet they are not. Others, such as pirate radio operators, have noted the Federal Communications Commission denies free speech by requiring licenses and strict fees. Fees that most of us don't have. Don't assume just because someone doesn't have a million dollars, the person has no valid words to give to the population. Don't assume because someone doesn't have a million dollars to pay for a fee, the person has nothing worthwhile to say. Some of the greatest people who ever lived, some of the most profound people who ever lived are not millionaires. Some of these people could not afford FCC licenses for radio or television. These two reasons are the biggest, plus the other reasons I mentioned. When the government and capitalists combine, it's especially horrible. No, you cannot resist every aspect of corporations. It's way too difficult, if not impossible. What we can do is take out the most important chunk. As I said earlier, this is the foundation for so much other evil. It is a brainwashing tool. It's a conditioning tool. Are you going to let CBS tell you what you think? I sure hope not. You see a big difference in views between those who buy what the mainstream media says versus those who don't. It's amazing. I wrote a book about television called Federation About Television, The Blossoming Movement, Essays and Leaflets. This book describes what's wrong with television and what's the right way to oppose it. This organization is dedicated to providing forums contrary to mainstream media. The second evil is an evil which once upon a time was recognized as evil, but today it is not. In fact, it once was temporarily defeated. But sadly, it is still in existence. The evil of which I speak is alcohol. You may say, are you nuts? There's absolutely nothing wrong with alcohol. Those who say alcohol 
had any problems are ludicrous. No, no, no. There's sound reason for what I'm saying. One website made an interesting point. This website contrasted all the war deaths on the U.S. side from all U.S. wars combined versus another evil which I plan to get into later. This website added up the war deaths. It is about 1.2 million. This is all the way from the Revolutionary War to the First Gulf War. Even if you add on the deaths from the Afghanistan War plus the Iraq War, you still don't have that much more than 1.2 million. Statistics show that every year 110,000 people die from alcohol use. Just as a website did, let's contrast this to war death. In just 12, 13 years, more Americans die from alcohol related causes than die from all U.S. wars combined. What takes 200 years to kill 1.2 million occurs in just 12, 13 with alcohol. Conventional wisdom tells us war is the deadliest conception that existed. But it looks as if conventional wisdom is wrong. Studies have shown alcohol causing death, certainly through cirrhosis of the liver plus destruction of other body parts, through accidents including drunk driving accidents, binge drinking, even homicide and suicide, even when alcohol does not kill someone it causes tremendous damage. Studies have shown alcohol use linked to rape and sexual assault, to property damage, to battery, spousal abuse, to families neglecting children, to poor academic performance, plus so much more. One book called Another Chance describes how alcohol destroys the whole family. To me, what is particularly dangerous and evil about alcohol is that alcohol need not swing fits for alcohol to destroy others. Wherever alcohol lurks, people are destroyed. This book describes how every family member develops intense psychological disturbances because of alcohol. Because of one alcoholic member behavior that leads to unhealthy reactions. The author says there are no healthy ways to react to the unhealthy condition of alcoholism. Studies show millions of Americans must live in alcohol at home. It is pervasive. Very, very pervasive. The whole idea of intoxication makes no sense to me. When you're intoxicated, you depress your brain. You depress the part of your brain which is essential for higher level thinking. You depress the part of the brain which gives you reasoning and rationality. Why would you want to depress that? You depress the part of the brain that makes you most human. Why depress that? To me, 
A perfect analogy, what drinking does to a person, is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So many wonderful Dr. Jekylls become Mr. Hyde under the influence. People become monsters. Some mellow monsters, some not so mellow monsters. It is horrendous what alcohol does to a person. Look into the eyes. If someone intoxicated, and you will see your rage. You understand why some have called this beverage, eating liquor. One book argues humanity has flaws, problems await it. Why give any more by alcohol use? It makes perfect sense. How does that compare the use of drugs to the use of a crutch? Indeed, indeed. One famous author is reported to have said, a life without intoxication is not worth a bucket of spit. He could not be more wrong. A life with intoxicated is a ruined life. In fact, a drug experience is an oxymoron. When you're under the influence of a drug, you're not experiencing. Bradford Little, a two-time speaker for Better Race Without Television, said drugs take the edge off a person. The goodness of a person declines. Nobody ever gets better. So many people become more superficial, less real. People lose vitality and zest. I hate it when someone who won't give me the time of day sober acts as if the person is my best buddy. Why can't you say, why can't you be that way sober? Don't you have the guts to do that? Otherwise, Earth Crisis, in one of its songs, said there's too much to experience and accomplish, two ways, a precious second, drunk or haste. That cannot be more true. You don't have to try anything once. I wonder about people who say, Bad dog is you try, you have to try something, everything, what? Baloney. There's so much you don't have to try to realize it's bad. Most people won't try heroin. Bad dog until you try it. Most people have not put a grenade in their mouth and pulled the pin. You can't knock it until you try it. Most people have not been run over by a dump truck. You can't knock it until you try it. It would be different if someone said, you can't try, try most everything before you knock it. But people don't say that. It's so absolutistic, it falls apart. I believe it's good to try a lot. It's good to be open-minded. But some, parts of the world you should not try. Think about it this way. How important is your bus? Is your bus so important that it justifies one rape, one sexual assault, one drunk driving death, one cirrhosis of the liver death, one shattered family? If it is, you're a selfish person. To me, if by banning alcohol yet not imprisoning or punishing users or sellers in any way, pause for a second, take in what I just said. If by banning alcohol without punishing users or sellers in any way, 
One more time I'll repeat that so you cannot put words in my mouth or misconstrue what I'm saying. If by banning alcohol we can without punishing users or even sellers we can prevent one drug trafficking death, one rape or sexual assault, one cirrhosis of the liver death, one shattered family, to me it is worth it. If you'd like to learn more about why alcohol is bad and what to do about it, I would like to offer you a copy of my book called Evil, the Impact of Alcohol and the Power of the Alcohol Industry. It's available in both electronic and printed formats. Read the third evil, fortunately, is recognized as evil by more people than the first, than recognized the first. Two, there are some people in society who consider this evil, though not enough. For most of this country's existence, there is no question this practice was evil. Then all of a sudden, 30 years ago, some fools said this wasn't evil. Therefore, it was legal. It's been legal ever since. Some call it abortion. I call it murder. abortion to war. Abortion is even more deadly than alcohol. This website shows how in just one year abortion kills more people than have died in all U.S. wars combined in 200 years on the U.S. side. Isn't that Amazing, yet some people think there's nothing wrong with abortion. Add up the numbers, it's truly staggering. Some have broken it down and shown 3,000 every single day die from abortion. Wow, wow, wow. It's unacceptable. But few care. Certainly the left doesn't care if you dare express anti-abortion sentiments around a leftist or liberal, you will be ridiculed. People get very defensive, very angry. You dare not question liberal orthodoxy. It's just something you cannot do. Though some other people say they're pro-life. Republicans say they're for life. Pro wood. We're pro wood. You even see it on official Republican Party agenda. But you have to ask yourself, what has the Republican Party done? I would say most Republicans are not pro life. In fact, one group called the Pro Choice Majority showed a study which demonstrates 73% of Republicans are pro-choice. Maybe this study is wrong. Maybe it's only 65%. Maybe even only 62%. Whatever the case may be, a whole lot of Republicans are pro-choice who claim to be pro-choice. The political party I belong to, the economy party, now requires those who sign up to take a pledge. The pledge says the person must be pro-life. We can compromise on welfare, we can compromise on health care, but abortion is too important. I don't even think our president is pro-life. What? He sure is. He says he's pro-life, but saying something alone doesn't make it true. The group Missionaries to Preborn, in a talk the group gave for Federation on Television, said to a largely pro-choice crowd, 
you all think Bush is a big threat. We don't think he's going to do anything. This was at the beginning of his term, 2001. It's now almost to the conclusion of his first, hopefully only term. Yet abortion still stands. The pro-choice people grave at him. But he's doing exactly what they want. They yell, keep abortion legal. He's doing exactly that. What more can you ask for? Pro-choice. Certainly Republicans, in a great state of cognitive dissidence, dictionary definition cognitive dissidence are Republicans today, say, we're fighting the war on terrorism. Because we can't worry about this. What? Excuse me? There's three responses to this. Number one is you don't have to quit doing everything else just because you're fighting the war on terrorism. Important as it is, even Bush isn't giving up everything. He's worried about gay marriage, cash guts, steroids. Plus, you certainly can worry about abortion while at the same time worry about the war on terrorism. The second problem with this attitude and even before 9-11 happened, Bush did nothing to stop abortion. Nothing of any significance. The third problem with this, abortion is worse than terrorism. 3,000 die every single day. As tragic as 9-11 was, one day, 3,000 died. As many as Saddam Hussein kills, the abortion doctors do that all the time. Saddam Hussein is a hiker compared to these abortion doctors. It is unacceptable that we allow abortion to happen. If Abortion laws are unjust, which they are. Enforcement of these laws are unjust. Just as they are few of any pro-life Republicans, there are few of any pro-life cops. Some cops say they're pro-life, so what? I can say on anything. I can say I Bush Gates, I am Bill Gates, this is air. That doesn't make it true just because I say it. You have to look at people's actions. What would you say if an abortion doctor said he or she was for life? I would hope you would think the abortion doctor is the dictionary definition of hypocrite, or at least insane. How can you actively participate in abortion and claim you are pro-life? I do concede some of those, some of those who are pro-choice are actually against the practice of abortion. These people just believe the government should not intervene. I disagree with that, but I believe those two views can coexist inside one person. doctors can't be pro-life, then those who assist the abortion doctors can't be considered pro-life. To assist them, the police. The police's job is to preserve and protect. The police's job is to enforce the law, which include the abortion law. Police are preserving and protecting the abortion industry. Do you think a cop is pro-life? 
just try to block the abortion from occurring. You will see very quickly how pro-life these cops are. You'll be high and will be arrested, thrown in jail. Cops follow the law and the law only, whether it's right or wrong. These cops are just doing their job, you say. As others claim, that didn't work at Nuremberg, these people say. At Nuremberg, so many Nazis said, oh, just following orders. Oh, just following orders. Nuremberg people said, no, you committed genocide. What you did was unacceptable. It was immoral. Regardless of the fact you were following orders. Same goes for cops helping abortion doctors. can do cops. Number one, you don't have to enforce these laws. You can say, I'm not going to be a cop until these laws are better. If the whole entire fraternal order of police withdrew all the cops because of unjust abortion laws, I think you would see those laws change pretty quickly. Unions have powers to do that. Unions have powers to go on strike. Fraternal order of police do that. But they don't. So you have to remember, cops have discretion. That is a key aspect of police work. If, for example, someone has a gun shooting someone else versus someone jaywalking over here, one cop can't be in the same two places at the same time. Therefore, most cops would go after the murder. Plus, when some nerd abortion doctor calls up these pro-lifers are picketing my clinic. Because all the cops need to say, too bad, deal with it, you wimp. We got important deals to worry about. We got domestic violence. We got rapes to worry about. You whiny little wimp. We don't have time for that. Deal with it yourself. But cops don't do that. Cops rush right there to help these abortion doctors. It's really sick. Also, cops should take a lesson from Morris Dees. Morris Dees, for his entire, for a long time, has fought racists. Those in groups such as the Ku Klux Klan, Aryan Nations, plus others. He says, I cannot go after these people just for holding these beliefs, just for belonging to these organizations. He says, what I can do is find a violation of the law. Then nail them to the law that he says, if they're not paying income taxes, I can nail them for that. If they trespass, I can nail them for that. Why not do the same for abortion doctors? Despite what some people think, abortion doctors are not pure angels and saints who never do anything wrong. Even the best of us break the law every single day, all the time. The matter, point, what cops could do is find some violation. If it's even as simple as traffic laws, if every single day these abortion doctors are pulled over for making a slightly incorrect turn, it'll make their life more difficult. And it should be. Murders should not be free to murder. If cops are not arresting murderers, cops are not doing the public a service. 3,000 every day, cops harass black people, harass the abortion doctors instead. Scrutinize abortion doctors with a microscope. I know you can find some violation of the law. Whatever 
water violation is fine. Nail them on it. Give them maximum punishment. If nothing else, these abortion doctors have to go through the humiliation of being arrested, the pain and hassle of court appearances, that alone could help the cause. Can you help the cause, cops? If not, can you truly claim your pro-choice, pro-life? I don't think so. These three evils are destroying this country plus the world. Let us put a halt to it. Let us crush and destroy the evil from mainstream media, alcohol, and also abortion. Doing such would make the world a better place. Crushing these evils to a bloody pulp will be better for life on earth. Long die death, long live life. Good evening.